<clears throat> you will have to forgive me. I've tried to put myself up with energy, but I think I am coming down with something, so my throat might be a bit crackly. So how do we wear the armour of God? Uh, that's the question we're looking at today, and I'm just wanting to read the verse again, um, and I just want you to take some time to reflect on it. Um, the first time was a little bit distracting. Um, and I just want you to think, does any of these resonate with you now? Have they ever resonated with you? Is there any that resonate more so than others? And just let the verses sink in. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all of the flaming arrows, arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. When I first read this passage as I was preparing um, for today, I saw a lot of imagery of battles and war zones and it made me feel, feel a little bit weary. Um, especially as my last talk was on the battles of David and Goliath. So I feel like I've already mentioned all the, these points. Um, so today I'm speaking as someone who knows and has been through what it's like to face a spiritual battles and when the devil has tried to direct me away from God. But at the minute, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> I think anyway. Um, so do I need the armor of God in this season of my life? I wanted to look at the everyday, the average day of what it could look like if I intentionally clothed myself in this armor at the start. Because if I'm being honest, I probably only think of it when I'm in the midst of my battles. So, it's tomorrow morning, and I'm waking up, getting out of bed, very last minute, I love my sleep, and I put on the belt of truth, and it's fastened tightly around my waist. And all day, it surrounds me with the truths of God. And just a few examples from the Bible is that we are loved, John 3:16 accepted, Romans 15, 7, a child of God, John 1, 12, protected, 1 Peter 1, 5, and there are so many more truths, and there is an extensive list on one of the prayer stations in there, if you want to have a look. What a great start to my morning. I've woken up, and I've been reminded of the truths, that I, uh, to remind you constantly of who I am in Christ. They settle me, they make me feel secure. So when I inevitably go on social media or start my work day and things start to attack and I see people who think with things that I want or see people who are doing things with all the time that I don't have and I really want to do, people who are adulting way too well, I don't know how they're doing it, <laughs> and I'm just like, need to slow down. When the world is telling me to take on more, to stretch myself um, too far, these are the truths that are helpful reminders of who I am and who is on my side, no matter how my day turns out. So if you want to grab your people cutouts, um, if you have them, and just on the bell area, um, if you want to write one of the truths that you look at, whether you look at, I am protected, I am loved, accepted, forgiven, you want to just write that down. And these won't be shown to anybody, you're taking these home, so. So 
So uh, now I've got the belt of truth around my waist. I then lift the breastplate of righteousness over my head. An article that I read whilst uh, preparing for this was, it said that righteousness is the quality of being right in the eyes of God, including character in our nature, our conscience, which is our attitude, our conduct, which is our action, and command, which is word. Righteousness is therefore based upon God's standard. And now this may seem an unachievable goal on a daily basis, especially on our own. But because of Jesus' sacrifice, this is a God-given gift. Our salvation is not based on how righteous we are. But imagine if the decisions that we made in the everyday life allowed us to show the character of Jesus, to have his attitude to love and serve others, to conduct our actions in a way that showed people who Jesus is without even uttering a word, and for our words to be used in such a way that people hear of a God who loves them so much. I'll admit this is the one that I would struggle with most. But even if I put the breastplate on each day, would it become a habit? If I'm intentional about putting it on, would my character change? Would I use my actions better? Can we make small steps that we could take to achieve this? Reflecting on our nature, our attitude, actions and words, and be willing to submit to change if I felt God nudging me closer to him. If I had the person, I didn't do it, um, but I would write stubborn. And let me tell you, I needed stubborn last week. <laughs> it was not determination, it was stubbornness that got me through the last seven miles. And so sometimes stub being stubborn is good. It got me through the kilt walk. But are there times in my life where the stubbornness is a barrier? Where I need to re relinquish that and become closer to God? Have a little moment to reflect. And is there anything that you could do to be more Christ-like? That's the goal. That's the end goal. Is there a char characteristic, an attitude, action or word that you want to harness, that you want to give up? And you can write that down on the chest of your person. Next, we put on the shoes, ones that are fitted with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace. And now, obviously, this is a pair, so I thought there could be two meanings to this. I'm ready to be filled with the peace of knowing that Jesus died for me. And Stuart spoke last week of being redeemed and forgiven. Does that not just fill you with peace? The weight of guilt and shame is lifted and you're able to walk a little lighter on your feet. I think I've spent a lot of years with the guilt and shame keeping me down. And rather, I'd like to focus on the love that is shown through the cross. And when doubt creeps in during the day, I can pause and think of the amazing sacrifice and just have that renewed peace of mind. Secondly, I think that this is the readiness to share the gospel and this peace with others. If we had these shoes on, would we be on the lookout for opportunities? Sorry. Opportunity to arise or even create our own opportunities to spread the word of the gospel. I remember often being challenged about how to share the gospel. If you only had a word or a sentence, 30 seconds to tell someone about it. How would you convey, the, convey this piece to others? So I'm going to challenge you now. Think of a, a sentence or a word. You just had a few seconds to tell somebody about the gospel. What would you put first? What would you tell them first? There's a peace in knowing that that seed is planted. And that's all we have to do. So in terms of an outfit, we've got our breastplate, we've got our shoes, and we've got our belt. 
I think if you walked out of the house, you would look a little bit silly. But you'd also look a little bit silly without one of them. If you didn't have your shoes on, I think you'd get some funny looks. But the last three items in this passage are ones you could easily forget, but are just as equally as important. The shield of faith. When I think of this, I see my faith being raised up in front of me. It's protecting me. I know this shield has definitely been used in my battles. My faith has gotten me through a lot in my life, and even when I thought I didn't have any, it has been keeping the flaming arrows from reaching me. It's comforting to know that even when it isn't raised and it's just by my side, I always have it to hand. Faith does not, does, faith does not, faith does get me through the everyday. We are constantly bombarded with negative news, people suffering, and in all honesty, I don't watch any of it anymore. <laughs> um, I just try and stay as informed as I can without the negative. Because I get really overwhelmed. And when that happens, I hang tight to my faith. And I can't believe people who don't have faith do it. I don't know how they do it. It helps me to see the good in every day. It helps me to find the hope in every day. And it's the hope in Jesus that sustains me throughout my day. So, next we're putting on our helmet of salvation. A reminder of what Jesus did for us died on the cross and defeated death for me and you. I think sometimes we can become a little bit complacent when we think, with that knowledge. But if we were intentionally putting it on every day, that reminder is staying in our head. How would that affect your every day? The enemy has no hold over us. Death is defeated. And if the enemy chooses this day to cast seeds of doubt, And let's face it, in the average day, there's a lot of opportunities. We have the response. You have no hold on me. I'd really love it if you'd just write that down, either on the head or somewhere on your your cutout. The devil has no hold on me. Lastly, before I walk out of the house to begin my day, I pick up the sword of the spirit. The rest of the armor makes me feel protected, makes me feel safe, makes me feel secure. And I can withstand the blows that are thrown my way. But this sword gives me courage. I can face my day knowing I'm not facing it alone. And I have a living guide to help me. God doesn't expect us to fight these battles alone. He is with us. And we can renew ourselves and our minds with his word. Let us wash over us and fill us with the Spirit. I think I would be very encouraged throughout my day and prepared for anything with the Spirit by my side. And there are many verses that I turn to. And the biggest one that's held for me is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you. So on the arm, um, where the sword would be held, I want you to write your go-to verse. When you're happy, when you're struggling, I feel like everybody's got a go-to verse that they just let it soak in. So... Do we need this armor in the everyday? Yes. From exploring this passage, I have definitely been challenged to put on the armor every day. Thinking about how it would affect me, and I can see no disadvantages. Who wouldn't want to start their day knowing that they are loved? Who wouldn't want their decisions to reflect Jesus and be filled with the gospel peace and ready to share it with those around us? 
to know that my faith sustains me, be reminded of my salvation and filled with his word. There are no disadvantages. And I've been challenged not just to think of putting this armor on when I think I need it most, but to be intentional about using it every day. Preparing myself in this season, in the everyday, so that I'm ready to face those battles ahead. I may not get it right all the time. I may oversleep. That's a good thing I will probably do. And I may forget something some days. But even if I just tried and challenged myself, I think each of the days would get better and better. I'm just going to pray for us now. Lord, thank you for this armour. Help us to be intentional about speaking your truth over ourselves and, and one another. To be righteous, filled with your peace, firm in our faith, reminded of our salvation, and to take your spirit with us in each season of our lives. Help us to keep all this at the forefront of our minds as we go into this week and the coming weeks. Create new habits in us that draw us closer to you and prepare us for whatever we might face or be facing right now. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, worship. And I'll get them to come in.